Right now, I'm gonna give you some of my very favorite Photoshop tips that you might not know. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and Happy New Year to all of you guys. And also a shout out to you guys in the notification squad who are probably here first. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you some of my very favorite Photoshop tips. So why don't we just jump right in? Okay, so here's an image I'm working on. Here's my buddy Lon. Uh, we're doing a Wolverine series. More about that later. All right, so let me just create a new layer here because maybe I want to add some color. Now, here's one of the things I'm sure you already know. If you hit the Alt or the Option key, you can get the eyedropper tool and you can click and that will change the foreground color to that color. Now, if you want to choose a very specific color, you can go in here and you can click on the color picker and this will bring up the color swatch. But there's another way to do it. We can do a super color picker on screen. What you want to do is hold down Command, Control, and Option on Mac, and then you're going to click, and you're going to see the Super Color Picker. Now, if you hit Control, right-click on Windows, it'll come up. Now, here's the thing. On the right-hand side, we can dial in the color, so we can choose our hue here, so maybe we want to go to a green, then we move across, and then we can do the saturation here. Brightness, so you go up and down, we'll change the brightness of this saturation is left to right. Now here's the thing, sometimes you're in here and you find it difficult to go across, right? Because as soon as I go across, it kind of moves it or I can't leave it there and go across the other one. So this is what you do. Once you're in here, keep your finger on the mouse, release all the keys, and now hold down the space bar. Now when we use the space bar, we're free to move around. So let's go over here. Let's dial in a nice orangey color. Hit the space bar, notice it doesn't move. We can move the mouse over here and now we can change how much saturation. Let's go all the way to saturation. Do we want it light or dark? Let's go nice and light. And then when I release, it sets the foreground color to that new color. And of course, if we're painting, we would just paint with it. The next thing is, let's look at scrubby sliders. There's a little bit more to them than you may know. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to this layer here. Maybe I wanna do some Shadow Highlight. So watch this. If we go up under the Image Adjustments and then we choose Shadow Highlight, we get our sliders. Let's click on More Options. And I'm just gonna drag this over to the side. So what if we wanted to, say, clip the blacks? Well, here's the thing. These are scrubby sliders, and maybe you knew or didn't know, but if you see a word, you can click and you can drag on it, and that enables you to adjust these, right? So here's the thing, if you're over here and you'll see this in something like curves where there is no name and it's just a dialog box, if you hold down the control or command key, this will enable scrubby dragging in any of the dialog boxes in Photoshop. But wait, it gets better. Because let's go over the black one. I'm going to click and drag. So what I'm trying to do is set how much black clipping we've got. Hmm, it's not really doing a lot of difference there, is it? So here's the thing. If I hold down the shift key as well, now this will move 10 times as fast. And so for something like this, where I want to cover a lot of ground, it enables me to do that. But right in here, I want to kind of dial it. So if I let go of the shift key, notice it goes back to normal. And if you want to do micro adjustment, hold down the option key, and now notice it moves very, very slowly. So let's recap on that. So you can click in here and drag or you can hit the control key or command key and drag from in here. Once you start dragging, you can release the keys so it doesn't matter. So whether you're dragging from here or you're dragging in here, it doesn't matter. The values are still changing. Shift key speeds it up 10 times really fast. Option key or the alt key, very slow. And this gives you minute control over the adjustments. And of course this works inside of any field inside of Photoshop. Okay, what about cleaning this up? You know, what if we've got layers here and we want to get rid of the empty layers? And I'm not sure if it's empty or not. Here's a quick way to find out. Just hit Command T, or that would be Control T on Windows for free transform. And if you see this dialog box where it says the bounding box is empty, that tells you there's nothing in the layer. Because sometimes there can be things in the layer which are kind of small and hidden. Another way to do it is to hit the Alt or the Option key and click in the layer. And if it just goes to the full screen like it did there, you also know there's nothing there. If there was a little spot in here like this, and I hit Alt or Option, 
it will zoom into that spot. Now that's on Photoshop 2020 only. Now here's the other thing. Let me get rid of that layer. If I want to get rid of all the empty layers at once, all I need to do is just go under here, choose file, go down to the scripts and you'll see a script here that says delete all empty layers. I click on there, all the empty layers are gone. While we're working in layers, let's look at another tip. Let's just drag the layers panel out so we can see, you know what, we've got a lot of stuff here inside of different layer groups here. So what if I just want to get all of these out of the groups and just get them all together, stacked one above the other? Well, all I need to do is hit the top layer, go down here, hold down the shift key and click on the bottom. I'm not choosing the background because it's not a layer. And then all I need to do is see these layer groups, just command click on each of these to take them away from the selection. So right now, all I'm selecting is all the layers, not the groups. And all I need to do is click and drag to the very top. See that little line release. And now notice all the layers are stacked one on top of the other. And these empty groups are there, you know, and these could just be thrown away. There's even in the subgroups. Notice under the subgroups, there's nothing in there. It's put all the layers together so they're all accessible to you. So while we're here, let's have a look at a tip for getting images or layers from one document to another one, because I've seen people mess this up so many times. So all we need to do is say we're working in this other document here and, you know, we want to take this Twitter logo. So I'm going to hit the command key and just click on it. And I've got this logo. I've seen a lot of people that command C, you know, or control C to copy it. Then they go in here and control C or command C to paste it. So here's the thing with that is that's still in memory. Even when we've finished, it saves it to the memory before we paste it. The other option is to just drag it over. So we could just click, drag into the tab. Once that opens, go down, don't release yet, now release, and it will copy that in here without having to put it into the memory buffer. The other thing, of course, you can do is you can save, you can select multiple layers by click, hold down the shift key, select these layers. So now we've got three layers. I can go up in here now and I can also copy all three of these layers if you want into the other document at once. So this works on multiple layers. It also works on things like adjustments. Check this out. So of course there's our three layers, one, two, three. But what if we wanted something like, hey, I like this curves adjustment, nice curves. Can I have this? Sure. We drag this curves adjustment, go up into the other document, go here, drop it in there and boom, look at that, that curves adjustment, of course we don't really, it's not very useful, but we've got that curves adjustment right there inside of this document. So this works for all manners of things. We can use it for adjustment layers, smart objects, um, paths, all kinds of things. You can copy them from one document into the other. Okay, so say we want to work in perspective and you may or may not be aware of Vanishing Point, but here's something really cool about Vanishing Point. I'm going to copy these logos in and put them onto the different surfaces really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide the first two. I should just click there. We're just going to show one. I'm going to select the layer, control or command A to select all, control or command C to copy. And now we can just turn off that selection, hitting control D or command D for deselect. Okay, so what do we do? Control command A to select all, control command C to copy, control command D to turn off. So that's A, C, D. Almost like ACDC, makes it easy to remember, right? Okay, so let's hide this and create a new layer. So now we create a blank layer, but we're not gonna paste it into this layer just yet. And we're actually gonna work on this layer, but now we're gonna go under the filter and we're gonna go to vanishing point, which is where we work with perspective. All right, so here we are in vanishing point. The first tool to come up will be this grid. And what we need to do is define the perspective. So we just need to click on four points. Let's click on that corner there. Let's go down to the next corner. Bonus tip. If you hit the X key, it will enable you to temporarily zoom in so you can see nice and close. And I just clicked here and let's click on there and go over to the other corner. They're just following the perspective and we can create a grid. The nice thing about that is you can just click here to extend it if you want, but we can also add other grids. So why don't we add a couple more? Let's add one over here. And I'm just defining that. Great. 
And just for good measure, let's do another couple. Let's do one here. Hitting those corners, going down, following those lines for that perspective. So you don't really even have to understand perspective just to give it these grids. And if we want to do another one over here, we can. Let's do that, just drag it down. And notice you can also click this off the screen in order to set the perspective. Great. All right, we've set some perspective, but notice this, this is in red. It's telling me, hey, this is not right. So let's grab that corner. And I see why, because I need to pull that out a little bit. Notice it turns blue to tell you, hey, the perspective's right. Great, let's click OK. But before we do, why don't we paste in our logo? So Control or Command V will paste in our logo. Now watch this. It will snap to any one of our surfaces here that we've created. So if we want to start and put it here, why don't we put it there? What we need to do is just grab this little scale tool here. And now we can scale this in perspective. I'm holding down the shift key to constrain it. Looking good. Now I can just click OK or whatever, or click here to apply it. I'm just going to hit the Enter key because I'm happy with that. Because it's on a new layer, we can go in here and we can change the blend mode here. Let's do a nice soft light. Great. Let's add a second logo. Let's add the Photoshop Cafe logo. Command A. Command C. Command D. Remember, A, C, D, C. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that, create a new layer. Great. Let's go back into Vanishing Point. Now, here's the cool thing about this you'll see in a second when we go under Filter, Vanishing Point. That grid remains. We don't have to recreate it each time. So this is why I'm working on a separate layer each time. Control V or Command V to drop that down there. Notice that we can just move it into position, hit the Enter key, and boom, that's done. And once again, now we can change the opacity if we want. We can change the blend mode. Let's just change the opacity on that one. Let's do it one more time, and I'll show you something else. The one we want now is this logo. Control A, C, D. So that's Command A, Command C, Command D, or Control. And we're going to hide that, create a brand new layer. Go to Vanishing Point again. Control V for paste. I don't know where the V gets in there for paste, but check it out. We can snap it. Notice that we can put it on any surface we want. We could put it there. It would look quite nice. But here's a crazy thing. You could even go up into the sky if you wanted, and it will follow that perspective. What it will do is it will follow the last perspective that it saw. So we could put it up there. We could put it up here. So, you know, say we were doing a futuristic, you know, Blade Runner kind of thing, and we want to put a screen up above there. We could do that. Hit Enter. And there we go. So there's a ton of little tips there for you. Now, I'm just so full of it when it comes to tips. I've got lots and lots of tips for you. And I just want to mention something that I just dropped, and it's a brand new uh, title. It's a 89 lesson title, and it's called Photoshop 2020 for Digital Photographers. I'll give you guys a link to that, so check that out. And that also comes with every lesson file for all of those 89 lessons. And also, I'm going to give you a 20% discount for a limited time for you as the YouTube subscribers. So anyway, I'm curious if any of these tips were new to you, if you enjoyed them, and let me know in the comments underneath what was your favorite tip out of all of these tips and which ones were new. And by the way, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe, consider hitting that subscribe button right now, become part of the Cafe crew, and also hit that little notification bell, become part of the notification squad so you know when I upload a new video, which is usually once a week. Anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.